Hello everybody, and welcome to this video of myself and Mr. Simon Bates. Hello. And hopefully you've got the flavour by now. Today, we are looking at three things to rearrange your uh, face with. Uh, it's three metal, bright, lively alto sax mouthpieces. Although this is the most mellow of the lot, I think. Yeah, uh, well, brace yourselves. <laughs> There's a three of them. Yeah, yeah it's only going to get more violent. <laughs> um, yeah, look, we know there's a, there's a certain penchant sometimes for this bright, edgy, funky, lively, poppy sound. Mm, you might absolutely, be, Absolutely. You know, yeah. And maybe we should cover that, actually. When might you want this sort of a mouthpiece? You know? um, well, I, I use two mouthpieces on the, the alto. Uh, generally, I'll use a Maya for, for, for jazz, sitting in a big band. If ever I go into a horn section, though, that doesn't really cut through, so I, I need to, to use something with a bit more power. Um, I'm quite fortunate to have one of the old handmade Godalas, um, which gives me the edge, gives me the tone uh, and, and, and the power that I want to cut through. If I'm playing funk or anything like that, that's, that's the mouthpiece I'll, I'll use. Uh, any pop gigs, again, you yeah. know, that's, that's that sort of thing. So it's, that, it's, it's not subtle, uh, and these sorts of mouthpieces do need a bit of work. If you've not played one before and you've just been using something like a Mayer or a Link or whatever it is, or even if you're moving up from a student one, crikey, this will feel really weird, quite yeah, different absolutely and quite hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you, you have to put the homework in. I think with, with any mouthpiece, you need to put the homework in. But with, with, with these, they may not be immediate. You know, I, I've actually had a chance to blow them a little bit. Um, and out of the box, I was thinking, crikey, these are hard work. But when you get used to them, the, the rewards are, are, well, you can hear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we've got three we're going to look at. The Woodstone uh, the Smooth, the Woodstone Groove, and the Theowani Mindy Abair custom model as well. So these three are of the same school to a degree, but they do deliver the, the tone slightly differently, as you're going to tell. So within the Woodstone 2, this is the smooth. Uh, it's a tip opening 6 that we're using today. Uh, Simon would probably like something a little bit bigger normally, but just for availability, we've got a 6 on the groove and the smooth. And we're using a Jazz ZZ3 Van Doren mouth, uh, read, sorry on a Yamaha 875 sax, just because people always ask what are you actually using them on. So let's have a little bit more of a listen to the smooth and then we'll jump over to the groove and talk about that as well. Bit naughty. Yeah, it's 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 like the smooth's evil twin, and not that the smooth is smooth, but yeah, this is this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty lively to put it mildly, and I would imagine it's slightly hard work to, to play. They, they do have a very sharp beak on the woodstones as well, mm. which takes a bit of getting used to. You can see there, it's really pretty. Yeah, ouch. So yeah, first impressions, it's kind of wild it in, is, in yeah. a totally it's, wild it's, way. It, yeah, it's, it's like a turbocharged, fuel injected. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's not refined, but it's wonderful. You know, it's, it's really <laughs> nasty. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like sort of yeah. licking your fingers and putting it in the plug socket. But yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, there's pleasure to be derived some, by yeah, some people. For some that. people, yeah. So I suppose, I mean, yes, we've talked about where this thing, where these sorts of mouthpieces might be used, but I think you'd have to be really quite experienced and understand what you're wanting to do with this to yeah. basically get away with it. Otherwise, yeah. it's just probably going to sound bad. That's fair. To, you know well, what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I get your point. I mean, it's you know, it's, it's not a refined mouthpiece, but you're not going to be playing the sort of music that, that you know. This is a heavy metal, horrible, yeah. you know, music. No, it's not, not. I'm not saying heavy metal's horrible, guys. You know, it's, <laughs> it's just a. It's the attitude. It, it's that a, yeah, it's a really powerful, nasty. Is it's kind of quite a good word in a way. You know, it's it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, the technical difference, this and the smooth, the groove has an even more aggressive, higher baffle, really edgy, very, very shallow up there. So we'll try and maybe show you those two back to back in a close up so you can see that. Uh, but the net result makes it have that kind of really, really crazy side. But maybe let's have a little bit more of this. And then we're going to jump to the Mindio Bear, which actually is a slightly different kettle of fish. Mm. So let's hear a little bit more on the groove and then we'll swap over.
Okay, so we're back, and this is the Theo Annie Mindy Bear custom model. So Mindy is an American saxophonist uh, who you may have seen lots of smooth jazz, pop stuff, funk stuff as well. And this mouthpiece is a bit different to the other two, actually. And even just sitting here, I can hear quite mm -hmm. a difference. I'm hoping you guys pick that up uh, through the medium that we're presenting to you on. But Simon, just your first thoughts from a playing point of view. Yeah, there's, there's a little more warmth to this, but uh, let's face it, you know, this, this is a girl who plays saxophone for Aerosmith, so it's still not going to be that subtle. Um, it, it takes a bit of getting used to, but, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy playing it now. I've, I've had it for a little while. Um, yeah, I think more versatile perhaps than the other two. Indeed, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. again, it's, it's not, not the, 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 the best mouthpiece to play at the bottom, but as I say, you know, when you're playing with Aerosmith, do you want to play bottom B flats? Who knows? But probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I think from a manufacturing point of view, the Theo Wani stuff is always really, really good, extremely yeah. versatile. Mm -hmm. And you can tell, I mean, the, the Woodstones are really well made as well, so I'm not, I'm not comparing that like, like with like. But when you look at metal mouthpieces generally, they just have to be spot on. Mm. They have to be. Even things like where you're putting the reed has to be spot on. The ligature has to be spot on. Because if there's anything not quite right, it'll chuck you off when yeah, it? it'll yeah, squawk absolutely. and squeak and yeah, all the rest of, of it. Yeah. So, no, we really like the, the finishing quality on all of these, but the yeah. CO1 is a very uh, reliable for Yeah, the ligature is great as well. Um, yeah, it's a proper ligature that works, yeah. uh, asserts the pressure evenly. You can even adjust the position. We won't get into that mm -hmm. today, but you can do all of that uh, as well. So, uh, yeah, I think all in all, maybe this has even more to offer in terms of versatility. I mean, yeah, quite possibly. you could, yeah. you know, function, back, whatever, there's places you could do that, isn't there, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the Woodstones do have more of a, uh, just a total craziness about them. They do, them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But maybe give us a little bit more on this, Simon, and then end okay. the final thoughts to finish. <laughs> So it looks, just actually one final point, it's a very physical relationship you have to have with these sorts uh, of matches. Yeah, and playing in this is. style, yeah. just mm -hmm. sitting here watching you, you're really, yeah, there's well, a lot going on. Yeah, when you look at somebody like David Sanborn, who, who I guess is the, the king of the bright, bright tone, you know, he's, moved, he's got a very strange style anyway, but he moves his head around all over the place and, and, and tries to achieve, a, you know, different textures and diff different feels with it. You know, you're never going to split a note <laughs> if you just keep your head still, you know. If you change the angle of the mouthpiece, that's that's the way you're going to do that. So, yeah, um, yeah, it's a workout, mind, and, <laughs> mind, yeah. body, and ears. I mean, it, it is summer at the moment, but uh, I am sweating from yeah. playing these mouthpieces. <laughs> that, that's for sure. That's how much he's enjoying them. <laughs> <laughs> so, hopefully, that gives you some idea. There are a few metal bright mouthpieces out there, but we think these three uh, give a pretty good representation of the sorts of stuff. And actually probably there's an answer within these. If you do want to try them, we offer an approval period. Uh, so you can try two or three of these different models at once at home. We can send them to you, you can try them out and send back what you don't want. Uh, or if you can make it to the store, uh, obviously come down and try them as well. But that's pretty much it for today. Do keep up with us on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and leave any comments you want to in the box. And yeah, if you ever fall out with your neighbour, just put this video on, <laughs> full volume, and then, you know, walk away and leave it. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for watching.